Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, this is Orange Juice. Today I'll be talking about True Red and True Blue. To simplify things, in a clan match when you request for a friendly battle, the one requesting will be True Blue, and the player who accepts the match will be True Red. When you or another clanmate spectates a friendly battle, you'll be able to determine who is True Blue and who's True Red. When you're True Red, what the game does is flip the map and basically mirrors the units you play so that you appear on the bottom of the screen as player blue. Even if you're actually true red, in a perfect world, the mirrored map should reflect the card actions perfectly, but with XY coordinate rounding errors, interactions with certain units on certain tiles are not always going to be identical. Let's explore these discrepancies. When you split barbarians in the back, specifically on the center right tile, three barbarians will split right, and one barbarian will always split left. This is consistent with true red and true blue. However, when you plant the barbarians on the center left tile, true blue will split two barbarians on the left and two barbarians on the right, whereas true red will split three barbarians to the left and one on the right. When you're attacking with a hog on offense, you can't bypass a 4-3 building plant with a hog rider because he has the largest sight range in the game. Spanning 9.5 tiles, he's easily attracted to buildings. However, if you can nudge him a little bit with a pig push, you can bypass a 4 or 3 building plant with the hog rider. Check out my pig push video if you haven't seen it yet for a more in-depth explanation of how pig pushing works. Now, when you're true blue, you don't need to do a pig push on the left side. Without requiring any units to push, you can hog hop the left river as true blue to completely bypass a 4-3 building plant. When a balloon is planted on the second most outer tile of the map on the right side, both of the balloons will be pulled with a defensive building with a 4-2 building plant, effectively defending against most of the balloon. Now, when a balloon is planted on the map on the left side, True Red will actually bypass a 4-2 building plant, so True Blue fails to defend in this scenario. Against Elite Barbarians, whenever they're approaching you from the right lane, you can actually kite them with an Ice Golem to the left lane. This doesn't hold true when Elite Barbarians are coming at you from the left lane. True Blue cannot kite Elite Barbarians with an Ice Golem on the fourth tile. Instead, True Blue has to plant the Ice Golem on the second or first tile from the river to successfully kite Elite Barbarians from the left lane. Against Royal Giants, there's an inconsistency on both player red and player blue. When a Tesla has planted three tiles from the river and three tiles from the arena tower, True Blue's Royal Giant will bypass the left side. When you plant a Royal Giant on the right side, now True Red has the advantage and can bypass the right side without activating the Tesla. I honestly think this interaction was the death of the Tesla. Otherwise, it would have been a reliable counter to the Royal Giant because it functioned properly on both sides. You wouldn't have needed to react to a Royal Giant with an Inferno Tower or anything else. During the minor meta, when he was in every single deck, it was a little confusing which tiles were optimal for countering him because there were inconsistencies. When the Elixir Collector is planted in front of the King's Tower and the Miner is planted in the corner on this tile, True Red's Miner will attack the Elixir Collector, whereas True Blue's Miner will activate the King's Tower instead of attacking the Elixir Collector. When an Elixir Collector is planted on the corner right side, where the Miner will attack the Elixir Collector, while True Blue's Miner will attack the Arena Tower, leaving that Elixir Collector untouched. This becomes even more confusing when the Elixir Collector is planted on the left side. Now True Red's Miner will attack the Arena Tower, and True Blue's Miner will attack the Elixir Collector. So, in a clan match, the person to request for the match will be assigned as True Blue, and the person who accepts the match will be assigned as True Red. You can spectate to verify the true colors. However, when you spectate a friend on your friends list, it is not a reliable way to determine their true color because you get spectator bias. So the game will always display your friend as blue, regardless if that's their true color or not. On ladder, you can determine if you're true blue immediately based on the trophies. If you have more trophies than your opponent, then you will be assigned as true blue. The player with the lower amount of trophies will be assigned as true red, 
Also, this is the only game mode where the intro screen for home and visitor holds true most of the time. In challenges, the player with more wins will be true blue. There's no way to know right off the bat if you have more wins than your opponent or not. And the intro screen is not accurate as you'll sometimes appear as home and you'll sometimes appear as a visitor, regardless of your true color. Why does this happen? Andrew from Reddit makes an educated guess, explaining that the units are in an XY plane. The pathfinding AI dictates what position they'll move to next. The calculations involved in that decision will sometimes require rounding fractional numbers. This rounding step will result in different outcomes based on what quadrant of the map you're in and where you're headed. True Blue sees the XYZ plane as it really is. True Red will see the mirror image of the true plane. This allows both players to appear at the bottom when they play. So to recap, the True Red and the True Blue bug makes this game unplayable. Nah, I'm just kidding. But they do have very slight field differences. I wouldn't even consider them field advantages. Since both sides have different interactions, they're so minuscule it won't change your gameplay. Not unless you're consistently reaching 12 wins back to back to back. Chances are these minuscule discrepancies and in unit interactions won't influence the final outcome of a battle. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more confusing OJ.